final day of my Heartbreak Boys road trip and I am in lovely, glamorous Brighton with the legend that is Juno Dawson. Hello. Hi. Hello, Simon. How are you? I'm very, very well and so excited to, to be here with your award-winning self, may I say. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations on, on that for Meat Market. I know that was I was very surprised literally because a box just arrived the DPD courier arrived at my door and said can you sign for this and I opened it up and it was the YA book prize and I was like oh okay what, what, a, what a lovely surprise it and was well I mean actually the fact that I wasn't sat there like at the Hay Festival waiting to hear my name probably meant that I saved myself a small coronary incident because actually when you're sat in that room waiting for them to announce the winner it's quite nerve-wracking and they don't tell you in advance as well the way book prize is one where they don't give you any advance notice right so the, the fact it literally just arrived in the post it was a bit like a baby washing up in a basket or something like that it was it was terribly <laughs> exciting it's fabulous it's fabulous um so now first of all um what have you bought for my virtual campfire uh for us well i thought you you wouldn't want a campfire without campfire stories so i brought my very beautiful um edition of alice in wonderland by lewis carroll which that isn't that gorgeous is a very beautiful illustrated edition and um, with the original illustrations and of course, the original Lewis Carroll text, which I have recently plundered for my own commercial benefit. Well, now let's talk about that because um, I've I've been reading Wonderland most recently, your your most recent uh, YA novel. Um, I I mean, I could fanboy about this book for a Shall great. I wave week. it around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wave it around. Go and get it. It's um. But it's such it is such a a wonderful book. I thought it was completely addictive in terms of the plot and the storyline. And 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 for me as well, I just loved the the sort of the sharpness of the wit in it and and the main character Alice, who I completely adore. I mean, it is it is an intoxicating book in so many ways. <laughs> um, if people haven't yet discovered it, Juno, how how would you kind of tell them about it out of interest? It is, it, I mean, it is. It's a retelling of the Lewis Carroll Alice in Wonderland, but now Alice is a 17-year-old transgender student from St Agnes, which is the school you might remember from Clean. And um, she has fallen in love with a girl called Bunny Liddell, who <laughs> does vanish. And when the police don't seem too interested in solving this case, Alice picks up the mystery and she follows a series of clues to a mysterious and exciting exclusive festival known only as Wonderland. So it's a mystery, it's a love story, um, there's lots of wild behaviour, it's been compared to Gossip Girl or Skins and, and that's very much sort of my jam. So if you enjoyed Clean and Meat Market you'll definitely love Wonderland too. I think everyone will love Wonderland, it is fantastic, everyone should pick it up. Now talking about Clean and Meat Market as well, uh, we have this whole world you've created there of um, of like extraordinary privilege and, and and characters who have access to money and wealth, um, which I think most of us have have probably never experienced or seen. What drew you to to writing about those sorts of of people? I think for the same reason that I've previously written about witchcraft and ghosts, you know, to me living with that kind of privilege is a fantasy world and when I lived in London I was living on council estate in Battersea where I could literally see over the Thames into Chelsea and so it was like looking into a fantasy world and you know I would see these people and, and really I think all great stories come from a what if and for me the most fascinating what if is what if you never had to worry about money you know as as the proletariat, you know, we, we our lives are very much determined by money, but there are people in this country for whom money has never, ever been a concern. And I find that really fascinating. How did you go about, because when I read it, I, it, it feels to me completely real and completely in, in sort of natural in terms of how the world is described. Like it feels like you're completely 
au fait with that type of, of world as, as, a, as a writer, actually. So how did you go about doing that? And, and, and was, it, was it research or, or are there elements of this you've actually <laughs> used yourself in various ways? How just does it going work? on the lash. Yeah, just going <laughs> on the lash in Chelsea. Just take out a credit card and no, no, don't do that. That's bad. Um, I think, so I don't think this is a novel that I could have maybe written at the beginning of my career, before I lived in London. Um, I think when I when I got published originally in 2012 um, and you know started writing for big magazines in London, I did start to rub up against this kind of privilege. And you know, people would say, Oh, you see that Russian guy over there, you know, he owns Sweden. And you're kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, and you mean it, this isn't a joke, you know. And you suddenly realize that they move among us. <laughs> you know, it really is like vampires are witches. They move among us. But it, instead of being vampires, they're worse. <laughs> yes, well, absolutely. I mean, yeah, 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 totally. No, amazing. Now, um, now, do you know you are, without wishing to make you sound old or anything, which you are not, but you are <laughs> something of a a grand dame of the of the YA scene, aren't you? Really, you've you've had is it ten novels, ten ten books now you've had out? I think I've lost count. With with I think it's ten novels. I think yeah. Wonderland is my tenth novel. I wow. think. Wowzers! It seems plausible. Um. How I just wondered what your view was of of the kind of the UK YA scene at the, at the moment. I mean, you know, you've you've been you've been part of it for for several years now, and I wondered how how you you kind of seen it change and where you think it's kind of at at the moment, really. That's such a good one. I love YA fiction and I love the UK YA market. I still feel like a newbie, which I know I'm not. <laughs> you know, I still I still remember really clearly sort of looking at people who'd come before me, people like. Um, Melvin Burgess or Mallory Blackman, Kevin Brooks, um, Mal Pete, the late great Mal Pete, people like Francis Harding. Um, and so I still feel like the young princess, kind of not like the queen of teen, despite the award to the country. But um, mm -hmm. so I still feel quite new. But then I, I do, I look at sort of who I see as kind of like the the successes, the people who came after people, and know you've spoken to people like Alice and Alice Osman and Lauren James. And, and I think it's really exciting. We need more, we just need more. I think the big difference is that it's slowed down. I think when I first got my book deal in 2010, you know, the world was still really high on Twilight and The Hunger Games yeah. And these novels that had sold hundreds of thousands of copies. I think it's been a really long time since a YA novel has gone quite so epic. I mean, I think Angie Thomas's The Hate You Give has become really iconic in a really short mm -hmm. amount of time. But I think um, this, but I quite like that nobody really knows what's going to be next. Um, yeah. I think you know, those, those kind of glory days will return again. It'll just take like a big new film or a TV series and we'll be right there again. But I still think I still think it's really exciting. And what, what I love about UKYA is that we seem to all know each other as well. Yeah. And it's, and it's a lovely bunch. I've re This year, I've really, really been bereft of Yalk or the Hay Festival or Edinburgh Festival. I'm really bummed out that I'm not going to see the gang and I was I was holding on to this glimmer of hope that yeah. Deccon in Dublin might still go ahead but they've just cancelled Deccon as well so 2020 is just not happening. It's a write-off is it? It's a terrible terrible year um indeed I just wonder as well like with the um with LGBTQ uh, plus UKYA in, in particular because like when when my first novel Noah came out in, in 2017 I, I still felt I still felt that Overall, it felt like that area was still quite dominated by US authors, mm. generally, and that and the, yeah. they mostly had the kind of the big titles, and a lot of the chatter was about them. Do you, how do you feel that's that's kind of improved for the UK authors over the last few years? Out of interest, do you think we've we've established our place a little bit more at I the table? Think, yeah, because I think we haven't been edged out by those massive titles in a way that we would have been just last week. Alice Osman's Loveless went into the top twenty. Yeah. Years. Awesome which, is, which is amazing because you know the, the rest of that chart was just David Williams and J.K. Rowling <laughs> the less said about them the better I think yeah. so um, you know for, for a real life human and Alice is a real life human to break into that top 20 in the middle of lockdown as well is really amazing 
It is. So there is lots to be happy about and lots to look forward to. Of course, yes. Always. Juno, we have to leave it there because, you know, it's the end of my tour and I need to get back home to London and everything and travel back on up. Good um, to see your dog. I'll say, my dog wants to say hello as well. Oh, yes, hello. Hello. Says hello. Oh, oh, how sweet. What's his name? This is Prince. Prince. There we go, Prince. What a lovely, what a lovely final image to end this road tour on. That is. But look, thank you so much for being part of it, Juno. It's so nice to chat to you. And good luck with your new book as well. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Fingers crossed, people will read it. Bye, <laughs> Simon's book. Bye, Simon's book. And there's a good final piece of advice from Juno Dawson to end this road trip on. Buy my book. Thank you very much indeed. Juno Dawson, lots of love. Bye.